This is an interview with Marie Getchell for the Kent State University Tuscarawas Campus Oral History Project, Women on the Homefront. The interview is being conducted at Marie Getchell's on March 25, 1989. My name is Carl Penick. Yeah, we were neighbors of the James Brothers. Oh, really? My grandfather's farm connected right to the James Brothers. Huh. Well, I'm going to ask you some questions there. Okay, can you remember where you were when uh, we declared war on Germany? Where I was? Yeah. That was in what year? Uh, it would be about... Uh, 1918, I believe. 1918? Yeah. I was in Canton, Ohio. Canton? Yeah. Uh, that's, were you working up there? Or? Mm -hmm. Working and going to school at night. Going to school at night? Mm -hmm. What type of school did you take? Typing shorthand. Now what? I can't even type. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I got off the right, it's so bad in my hands. What uh, what type of work were you doing? McKinley High. Oh, what kind? Yeah. Sales work. Sales. Mm -hmm. Can you remember what happened or what you were doing when they declared yeah, they, war? They, they, I know what they did when they declared peace. We when the <laughs> McKinley High gang got together and marched all over the town. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. I was working at the time in the, a candy store and uh, packing boxes of candy, sending overseas to the boys that were over there. Packing mm -hmm. boxes? Boxes of candy. Families come in and order a box of candy for their sons in certain locations. Mm -hmm. Were you married at this time? Or? No. 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 I married after the war was over. What, uh, didn't you say you worked for the Blue Cross? Really? Didn't you say you worked for Blue Cross? Red Cross. The Red Cross, I mean? Yeah. I worked for Red Cross and I sold bonds. Uh, was that during? That's during all the wars. During all the wars, mm -hmm. both of them. The last two wars we had, they sold more bonds than they did to the World War. Oh, they did? Yeah. What were, uh... See, I was only 18 years old. I went through quite a lot of that. Yeah, I'll bet you did. Mm -hmm. Did a lot of Red Cross knitting, Navy knitting, beanies, mittens. Rifle mittens. Is that right? Mm hmm. Socks. Sweaters. Hmm. But these old hands won't do that anymore. Yeah, that takes a lot of nimble fingers, probably, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it did. It takes <clears throat> a lot of knitting. Even socks. We needed Navy socks. Can you remember uh, how most of the United States felt whenever they went to war? Or, I'm going to tell you what. How did they, people in the United States feel when we went to war with Germany? Can you remember what most of the people Well, thought? I know they wanted peace. Yeah. They didn't want the war. But we were pushed into it more or less. Mm -hmm. And we had to defend our own country and defend our people. Right. Okay. We had a German soldier that during the World War One that uh, they confiscated a load of knitted materials that like the gloves, mittens, some sweaters, and uh, beanies. Mm -hmm. And uh, he got the, one of the army sweaters that slip on was armless, you know. 
and he wrote a letter back to our Red Cross in Westfield, New Jersey, telling us that he thanked us kindly for the sweaters, that they had taken the boat and uh, soldiers and all, put them, I don't know, with the way into a, a huddle or whether they, they uh, took the ship into their quarters wherever they were located over there in Germany. Oh, was that all right? And we had to find a lady that we knew that was German lady to translate our little letter and she thanked us for the sweaters. <laughs> I think we were very much in need of them because the weather wasn't too warm, I guess, at the time. Yeah. When the uh, war started, did it change 19, the way you were living? 1914, wasn't it? Yeah, I think that's when the, the war started, and then the United States didn't even, didn't get involved till later on. About 1918, yeah. they got involved, yeah. Yeah. Did that change your life any whenever they, the United States got involved in it? Or? Well, it didn't change my life any, but it changed the life of a lot of young men. Yeah, I'll bet. So there's a lot of them that didn't enlist. Some of them didn't enlist that went in voluntarily to defend our country. And they didn't have the draft back then. Yeah. They had to draft a lot of of the uh, younger generation at that time. Mm -hmm. So you more or less thought that uh, the United States was, was right by getting involved in the war then? Yeah. I sold bonds, worked for Red Cross. Did, uh, during the war, did you know any uh, German-American people, people that were originally from Germany that were over here? You mean mm -hmm. they, they were living in this country? Yeah. No, I didn't particularly know any one individual. So you didn't really know what the experiences they went through whenever they were over here? No, uh, I know they had a hard time over there in Germany. Uh, I had a very close friend that was from Germany. She and her husband were working for the York Safe and Lock Company, and uh, they were building the Bofer guns. Bofer guns? Yeah. That's the ones they had on the ships, oh, three long okay. those guns. My husband helped to uh, resign that gun, and I went with him over to New York and around different places to show it to the people what they were doing. Oh, you did? Yes. But, uh, where, do, where all did that take you to? Just in New York City. Just in New York? time, you know. They were interested in knowing what it looked like. They put it on the ships to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. The Old York Second Lock Company was their old building where they built safes at the time. And they turned it into the Navy, over to the Navy to build these guns. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Well, wasn't uh, Earl in uh, World War One? Earl was in World War One. Where was he stationed at? He was stationed in Germany. Well, was he stationed in Germany? Uh -huh. What part do you remember? Uh, on the Rhine. On the Rhine River? Yeah. Did he ever tell you any, about any... Uh, experiences that he had over there? Or? He had a hard time buying something to eat. Oh, really? Because he couldn't speak any German. Yeah. He motioned with his mouth and, and his hands, and they made it hand him a loaf of brown bread, as they called it. And that's what they lived on. 
Mm-hmm. And I would find food down there. Walk mm-hmm. miles and miles and miles a day. When they were discharged, I'd get the. We're out quite a distance in the field when they just heard that the war was over and discharged them, and they had to march back into Germany. And uh, I forget how many miles, hundreds of miles. Really? To get in. They didn't have vehicles and they had to in that war like they had in this last World War Two. Mm-hmm. They had to hoof it all the way. Yeah, that makes it a lot rougher. That made it pretty t- tough on them. I'll bet it did. Yeah. This Price girl that used to live over here uh, was in the Red Cross over there in, in Germany. Who's that? The Price's. Price's. Daughter, their youngest daughter, was in Red Cross service with it. Oh, she was? Yes. Mm-hmm. She buried over here in the cemetery with her mother and dad. She was Earl's girlfriend at the time of the war. <laughs> oh, was that right? <laughs> when they woke out World War One. Yeah, she got down into the field and sent the Red Cross out scouting around for injured people and to wherever they could help people. Mm-hmm. She sneaked into the camp where he was stationed, found out who he was. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> they gave him the supper that night. <laughs> he says, too bad we can't give you a bed. <laughs> <laughs> he said, we're used to sleeping in our, our own car. <laughs> yeah. They had a big truck, covered truck. Well, I guess they had quite a time, too. Yeah, I'll bet. That's... So, you sold bonds, you said, for... Uh... Mm-hmm. Now, was that during World War One? That was during World War Two. Oh, that was during World War Two. Mm-hmm. What, uh... Well, we, we were going to World War Two. Do you remember where what you were doing when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, where you were at at that time. Yeah, I was in Westfield, New Jersey. New Jersey. Mm-hmm. That's where my husband worked out of New York. Oh, the that's... U.S. Steel Corporation. Then they went into this Beaufort gun project in York, Pennsylvania. Oh, that's when you were traveling with him to, yeah. mm-hmm. to show the, the gun off. Mm-hmm. You had a, one of your boys in World David War David was in World War II. He just graduated from MIT. And Uncle Sam grabbed him. Oh, he was drafted. He didn't have to fight or anything. He was just working in an office. Oh, he was in an office. Uh, oh, where flying, was flying high with the fields. Taking dictation from the, up back, or the higher ups. <laughs> Oh, was that right? Yeah. <laughs> Where was he stationed at? He was stationed over in Germany. In Germany? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mean, you, were, out of you were living in New he Jersey? Was in there two years, yeah. You were living in New Jersey? In then? New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Well, can you remember when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor? Oh, dear. Quite a while, 19, What was it, 1917? Uh, this has been in the 1940s, 18. right? I know that uh, one of our doctors down here in Westfield's son was killed in that war. The Japanese went in on Pearl Harbor and bombed it. Mm-hmm. Can you remember what you were doing when they bombed Pearl Harbor? <clears throat> I mean, I know you were selling bonds and so forth. I was selling bonds. 
What was it? Uh, we had a booth. Uh, and, uh, Were you selling bonds before the war started? or? No, we sold it during the war. People wanted bonds, buy bonds for the grandchildren or the younger generations to mm-hmm. have. How did the economy change during World War II? Did it get better or worse? Well, I think that it was tough enough when we was going through the wars for the average person. Because a lot of them, their husbands was in the service and the wife and children were left behind. Mm-hmm. And they didn't get too much money a month to keep going on. Yeah. And uh, I guess it was pretty tough on some of them. You know, when you lose a, your uh, husband and he's in the war, God only knows where. You have to make do on their own. Traveling over the country. It's pretty hard on the ones left behind, especially when there's family. The children's the ones that suffer. Yeah. And I hope and pray I don't have to go through another one. World War One and Two was enough to go through. Yeah, I'll bet. David had just got out of. Well, he worked in an office a lot. Uh, in Detroit, Michigan, and uh, he met the little stenographer up there, and she seems as they got together, got married before he had to go overseas. So she came down to live with my husband and I for a while, and then she couldn't find a job. She was a typist. And uh, so she went back to her mother and dad up in Detroit and got her old job back in the same office she had before. So she finished up her time there till he came home. He was over two years. Oh, he was overseas for two years? Yeah. Did he uh, write, write to you while he was over there? Oh, yeah. Well, he well, kept in contact. Well, he kept contact. He did with her more than he did with us. But then, she, in turn, she'd write to us and tell us what she... He says, I'm flying high. <laughs> <laughs> in other words, he was flying around with some of the officers taking dictation. Yeah. <laughs> did, uh, if you were in New Jersey... What uh, what kind of changes did the industries, uh, were they forced to make any changes during the war as far as what they were producing or um, that you can remember? There was war materials being made under secrecy. We weren't supposed to know anything about. Mm-hmm. It's like with Red Cross, it's everything's a secret, you know. Oh, I see. And whenever you make a shipment of goods, like we did, out to the boys wherever they were located, uh-huh. and had the Germans confiscate the boat and take off the thing that we had knitted, and, uh, like lap robes and sweaters and socks and beanies. So they... That was for navies and, and uh, also for the army that we knitted. These old fingers had knitted a lot of beanies. <laughs> and then they ended up confiscating them. And socks. And then had somebody confiscate <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But he was kind enough, this one German soldier that got a sweater, American sweater, he liked it. Thought we did a good job. So I don't know where the other sweaters went to. I imagine the they. Stuff rolled over. 
imagine they appreciated everything they could get. Well, I know. imagine so too, because yeah. I probably didn't have anyone to do anything for them. Right. Is there any, was there any changes in the industry that you knew about in the area you were at? Other yeah. than the... Uh, was there what? Any changes in the industry as far as what they were producing? What they were producing? Well, that was mostly a secret. It, they didn't let things out, you know. Well, they wouldn't tell you what... They, they didn't uh, advertise it. Yeah. What they're doing, they're in secret. And, uh... Of course, there was a lot of making of guns and supplies shipped over. And I think, as I recall, there was quite a number of, of guns that was confiscated also mm -hmm. during the time of the wars between the states. As for not Master Hitler was in charge. Yeah. So your uh, your son, when he's over in Germany, he, in Germany, he had uh, pretty good working conditions then, huh? Yeah, he did. He didn't have to be tramping around. He was up in the air taking yeah. dictation, which was just lucky for him. Yeah, it was. Of course, he's a college boy and he was educated for such things, and that's what they wanted someone to take over. So, the more education you had, the better yeah, if you conditions you had. MIT and Uncle Sam did, you know. Well, he had just graduated, you say? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, the fighting the day before he graduated, he to report for duty. Well, he came out a captain, so I said that showed that he had good education, he had a good backing, mm -hmm. and whatever he did in the way of dictation, why, he proved he's worthy. That's We were just glad that he didn't have to go into the lines, fighting lines. But a lot of our boys we lost in both wars. Yeah. Well, did you you just had the one son. I was dead daughter too. What about, uh, did you have another son living up in Lorraine, or was that? That's uh, Elmer. Elmer, That's, yeah. That's uh, Earl's son. He was in the war. Oh, he was in the war, too? Yeah. He drove one of those big jeeps, what do you call them? Those big fellas. Uh, they didn't walk in World War Two. They... Like he did in World War One, like his father did. Mm -hmm. They had these big uh, bulldozers or whatever they called them that they rode around in. Oh, like the tanks or the tanks, amphibians. Uh huh. Where was he located at? Do you know? He was in the Lorraine. I mean, in the war. That's oh, in the war. Yeah. He was in Germany someplace, I don't know just what towns he was in. It was all over the world, they saw them. Uh huh. Where they had to head into. Okay, well, you say uh, your father was in the Civil War also. That was my grandfather. Your grandfather? My mother's father. He was a Civil War veteran. Did he ever tell you anything about that? Or? Well, as I said, he had to walk from Missouri down into the south. That, that uh, 
when they the, the North and the South had their arguments to straighten out. Mm -hmm. We lived close to the James Brothers. We were with the James Brothers and in Missouri. Are you they loved trains and our, my grandfather's farm joined their farm. You live close Since to the James Brothers. Somebody threw a bomb in the James um, home and hit the fireplace and blew the arm off of his mother. Really? Yeah. So we never did find out, to our knowledge, who was who that was at all. But, uh, somebody had it in for the James brothers, but they were train robbers, you know. Yeah. Did you ever see them? Or no, I never did. I wasn't. I don't remember that I saw any of the pictures of them. But one of the boys stayed at my grandmother's house, my mother's mother, and my, my grandfather overnight. But my, they didn't recognize who he was until the next day. Oh. My grandmother uh, let him sleep upstairs in the little log cabin that they had built when they were first married, and their kitchen was down below. Uh huh. So uh, she. Uh, walked up the stairs to call him for breakfast. And she didn't even know he was one of the neighbors at all at the time. She didn't recognize him when he came in. They didn't ask questions from people come by and wanted to bed to sleep in. They let him sleep there. Mm -hmm. Just like the old carpet men used to come around and had fancy tidies and stuff for the furniture. They'd keep them overnight, and they'd always give them a lace tablecloth or something that they were going to since they were selling. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, it wasn't like today. You never know who comes to your door. Well, that's for sure. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, they didn't know who then, but they trusted people a lot. Yeah. No, well, I was born and raised in Lathrop, Missouri. My grandfather had a cheese factory there. After he came back from service, he was sheriff of Lathrop. And he had a big farm that he ran. He ran the, had beehives, made honey. Oh, really? Sold to honey. Was stuck in uh, uh, beef cattle that he butchered and put out for the people at provision companies. And that's when they fed them cottonseed oil or cottonseed mesh. Uh -huh. They uh, rolled to a roller. You say this was your grandfather? This is my grandfather, mm -hmm. mother's father after he came back from the service. And uh, they raised, raised those big stairs, beef cattle out the west. When they had the cattle drives? Cattle drives, yeah. You know. Okay. Um. Was your uh, father involved in the Civil War? No, my dad never went into service. Oh, he never did? He was did. a farmer. Lathrop, was that? That Lathrop was where I was born. So was that a big town, was it? Or? No, it was a country town. Grant has had a cheese factory there. And Raised bees and made had the honey. And mm -hmm. 
Ladies living that way, and if it were his sheriff of the town, this is all after he came back from service. Civil War wasn't quite as well prepared for wars World War One and Two. 